now may I invite once more Deepak to explain us how one can pursue post-graduation study in medicine in Germany, which is not a classroom-based study like MD in India. What are the requirements and procedure to make career as a doctor? How to apply for visa, tuition fee, and other expenses? How long is the education? How is the current job market salary and those practical information? Deepak, please. Well, um, uh, Dr. Gautam, this is a topic where, where uh, I can speak for like hours together. I have made several online video courses. I have a YouTube channel with 150 videos on this topic and you're covering different aspects of this. I have, as you have mentioned right in the beginning, there's also my disclaimer that I have a, a consulting company where we uh, assist and guide international doctors, dentists, nurses uh, to uh, seek career in Germany. So uh, here today I will, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm, I'm going to cover certain aspects of this. I'm going to share my screen now. And uh, just a minute, not this one, this one. So uh, I hope you can see the screen. Yeah. Yeah. See, here uh, about me, as I said, uh, Demis International is a company and uh, we have been working since 2017. Uh, we are going to cover requirements, pathway, the license exams, the expenses that is to be expected and the, the uh, outcome, the salary or the income, uh, which is um, many times a motivating factor that one, when one wants to put step in particular direction, when uh, one wants to know that what is going to be the end point for what am I working for? All right. So requirements, this can get a little boring for people who are not actually inclined in this process, but for people who are uh, wanting to apply for post-graduation in Germany, want, uh, want to have a career in Germany, for them, this is very uh, important, this document. Uh, I have requested Dr. Gautam to share this also with the candidates via email uh, so that uh, it can be with the ca candidates. So these are the documents that you require, not very uh, critical documents, birth certificate, passport, uh, the degree certificate transcripts that you need this is the confusing part for many candidates that number of hours and number of marks both have to be there in your transcript now all these documents we are going to the next slide but here let me read here the photocopies of these documents have to be attested by the german embassy near you you don't need to need send originals but uh, uh, copies that has that are attested by the embassy here uh, many questions are about legalization there i will uh, say that legalization uh, you cannot do legalization as a private individual. Legalization is always done by the German authority. That means your documents come to a German authority. If German authority does not believe your documents, then they go via German embassy to the law, law firm in India and then they get it legalized. So you cannot go apostille. Uh, many people ask about apostille that, okay, shall we get documents apostille from the external affairs ministry in India? Uh, my answer is don't do that because uh, Germany and India do not have that apostille treaty, uh, the reciprocal apostille treaty. That means even if you do that, it is not valid. It is not, uh, you're just wasting your time and money. So uh, with this short uh, break, we'll go further in the next slide and we'll see the other document that is required. Personalized university curriculum. Now I have used this word personalized because university always has a fixed curriculum of 150 to 100 pages. And uh, if you ask for curriculum, they'll give you that and you can send it to Germany. But the German authority will say that uh, where it is written that it is your curriculum. I mean, you. it is said that, okay, you from this university, you have studied at this university, but where is your name? So that is why it has to be personalized. That means there, your name has to be attached somehow to that uh, personalized curriculum. Then it becomes your curriculum. These are the pitfalls which many candidates fall in and uh, this is why this I hope this uh, talk will be very useful for those candidates. They will not fall in these pitfalls. Uh, internship completion certificate, medical registration, uh, that is very clear. Language is required up to B2 level. Now, uh, there are levels from A1, A2, B1, B2, C1 and C2. C1 and C2 are advanced levels. C2 is a Muttersprachler, that's a mother tongue, native speaker language, uh, which uh, as a foreigner one never achieves, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but uh, on the certificate one can have uh, what is required is a b2 level b2 level is in itself not very small it's uh, a conversant uh, level where you can communicate fluently with a native speaker these certificates and then the work experience certificate these experience experience certificates are very important uh, about experience certificates is important that it should not be a generalized that this person worked with us from this duration, this duration, he was nice and good and uh, very friendly, not like that. It has to be uh, detailed, uh, oriented, like what work did you do? 
what were your hours uh, what things you learned over there how was your progress over there these detailed things have to be there in this experience certificate uh, that one has to take care while getting these experience certificates requirements further a uh, good standing certificate from the mci now the mci is not there so uh, you have to get it from the nmc you can also get it from your state uh, medical council police clearance certificate from the passport office medical fit fitness certificate this has to be done by the german doctors that means while you are in india or in your own country and applying to germany uh, you cannot get a medical uh, certificate that has to be sent later on certificate of good conduct from the german authority is called führungszeugnis that is relevant for candidates who are in germany like uh, they have to get this certificate from the local city council now we are going to see the steps which one has to take now the steps i have tried to make it in a step wise 1 2 3 4 5 system but many steps are overlapping and many things have to be done simultaneously parallelly now we'll try to understand and uh, segregate in steps step 1 is first of all is a decision that okay you compared and contrasted with different countries you saw your uh, inclination to what branches you want you see that okay that branches are possible in germany then you decide that okay i want to do germany uh, i want to go to germany in spite of the language barrier that you have already taken into account okay. then you begin with the first step the first step is your learn uh, german language german language as i said four levels you start with a1 during a1 you collect all your certain documents and get them attested from the embassy near you They, that can be done very easily via like you can book an appointment online uh, vfs global is a website they are the outsourcing partner basically from the embassy they uh, do it for uh, for you at a2 level you get the documents translated by the court sworn german translator now how do you find a court sworn german translator there are websites you can just google them and you can find there are around uh, 20000 translators on the website you can find one of any one of them uh, who matches the requirements that you have and you can get your documents translated um prepare a cv and a motivational letter now uh, remember everything has to be in german language that means the cv that i'm saying here is has to be in german according to german standard that means there has to be a photograph on the cv which is not very uh, like uh, customary in in indian system so you need to have a photograph here motivational letter that is going to be the body of your email that you are going to send to the prospective hospitals now this motivational letter should be three four paragraphs where you describe about yourself you describe uh, what you have done so far what you want to do so far what is what is your motivation your ambition uh, towards the role that you are pursuing in germany so these are uh, these has to, this has to be ready now After when those things are ready you fill the form that is uh, on the website choose a state which state you want to uh, apply for there are 16 states so many uh, medical councils so many licensing authorities you have to make a choice that okay which state am i going to apply for and uh, then you go to website of that state and then you fill the form send it in the same same time you have to start sending emails at the b1 level to different hospitals with application for hospitation or hospitation is observership basically that you come here you're not allowed to do anything you're not paid uh, if the hospital is very kind and generous to you they can offer you accommodation some food one time meal or something like that but uh, you should not expect much because uh, you're not doing anything you're not uh, giving any uh, value to them basically you are there for your own sake to learn and see how the system is and with that you also book a course fachsprach proof now what is fachsprach proof we will come later on the fax for preparation course you book with these three things that you have applied for hospitation then you have acceptance for hospitation right mm -hmm. you completed your b2 german language certificate mm -hmm. from goethe then you have received a deficit bescheid from the licensing authority now licensing authority when you send your application which we did uh, here in the step 5 when you send your documents to the licensing authority after a couple of months of lag phase they go through a document and they send you a, a notice a, a, a bescheid it is called basically which says that okay you have sent us this document very good now we have gone through that point 1 3 4 5 are covered now 6 7 8 are missing now send us again the documents for these things like send us the missing documents so that is a deficit bescheid which shows that the def deficits in your application now these three documents that you have these are very critical for your visa purposes when you apply for visa then when you have these documents along with the registration for fachsprach prüfung that means that a visa for from the perspective of visa uh, officer 
you are a genuine doctor in your own country and want to pursue your further career and work as a doctor in germany and for that you have already applied you already in touch with the hospitals you already booked a course that means he does not have any reason why you should not go to germany why you should not pursue your uh, path then the visa is very uh, like relatively uh, secure with the, with the when the proper reasoning is proper as i said here step 9 uh, apply for visa for the purpose of recognition of professional qualification according to the paragraph of visa laws it is 16d so if you google if you want to know the detail just para- paragraphs as x and day day uh, you will find out the uh, provisions of recognition of professional qualification here one has to open the blocked account as well and buy insurance as uh, mr latka has already uh, talked about that then uh, you have to book your accommodation flight after visa approval begin your hospitation or fsp course for whatever reason you are coming the fsp here is fakh prak profound course which i mentioned in the previous points and once you are here then you start applying for the assistant arts position assistant arts is a resident doctor basically so you start applying uh, to different hospitals for this uh, position now uh, the system here is very um, what you say it is not centralized that means it's not there is not a central counseling system there is not a central body where you can send your application and that will be forwarded to different hospitals it's not like that like we have in india like we have a counseling system in india in the us they have the eras and math system so here it's not like that you have to here you have to apply individually to different hospitals to different head of the departments via email or via post uh, for a position and when someone likes your application and they have the vacancy or they see that in future in coming months there is going to be a vacancy then they will get back to you and invite you for an interview or a interview with hospitation that means you do one day hospitation uh, that means you observe one day they will observe you for one day and then they will decide that if they find you a, a proper match for their system for their hospital uh on the parallelly you are waiting for your fakshprak proofing exam at the medical council the course that you are doing here you are waiting for the exam you pass the exam and once you pass the fakshprak proofing you get a provisional medical license that is a, a temporary license for 2 years duration now with this license you can work as a doctor you can earn normal salary but the work that you do is not counted as a residency training for residency training you need to pass your kentness proofing kentness proofing is a knowledge test knowledge test uh as the two exams fakshprak proofing is a lighter lighter one mainly as if you translate the word fakshprak proofing it comes that fak means the speciality the subject sprak is the language so subject matter exam basically uh, subject like the german medical entrance test one can say like that german medical test it is uh and the kentness proofing knowledge test tests your knowledge as a doctor uh, so the knowledge that is tested is basically of the mbbs level the finally mbbs um and plus the differences because the the training is different in different countries uh, what things people learn in the medical college here in germany probably certain some things are missed in our training in, in india so those things have to be taken care of those things have to be learned new so that has to be taken care of you have to prepare for the kentness proofing and pass the exam to join as a pg resident the work that you do after your uh, kentness proofing is counted as residency now we talked about uh, licensing exams fakshprak proofing as i said there is a c1 level medical german test valid in that same state where you applied for now kentness proofing knowledge test permanent medical license your pg training begins and it is accepted across germany important aspect which i get like many many questions on this topic that what is the expense one should expect now here we are talking about that you pay everything from your own hand you are not enrolled in any uh, company you are not going through any third person middleman nothing you are doing everything on your own you have learned everything on there are lots of videos on youtube about these things so uh, you invest uh you started language course that costs around different institutes of a different levels i mean different fee structure uh so that these are the thing fakshprak proofing this is a very range blocked account is a important thing now blocked account uh is the account for 12 months i have mentioned here now here this is uh for your living expenses that means a candidate who comes to germany who applies for visa 
uh, needs to show that his financially uh, he can live he can sustain the living costs of 800 900 euro monthly in germany now for that you don't need a, uh, a money in your own bank account or your father's bank account in india uh, one needs to have a separate blocked account where money is blocked as the name suggests that uh, that money cannot be withdrawn and more than 900 euro cannot be taken out every month that means your sustenance for 12 months is secure over there so that way the government that visa officer is sure that okay this person has um, uh, money in his account so he will not become a, a matter of social dependence when he reaches germany then the small fees like visa fees insurance fees uh, air travel i have calculated here small fees document translation uh, fachsprach prüfung exam fees kentnis prüfung exam fees gutachten if you go for their fees that comes around this is a totally approximate uh, number uh it a couple of thousand here and there one can count depending upon personal lifestyle personal pathways so uh the approximately amount is around 18000 one can uh, this is the uh, baseline one has to keep in mind when one uh, think thinks about uh, pursuing a career in germany as a doctor or as a dentist all things apply for dentists as well uh, as i have mentioned for doctors now we'll go to the next slide where we'll see that okay what will one earn because many times in in, in indian uh, subcontinent uh, pg that post graduation is a, a is a work that you do uh, for the hospital with a very low salary basically mm-hmm. private colleges people pay huge amounts of money to get those seats and they pursue the german system also with that mindset that what will be the tuition fee and uh, how much like uh, so, so here the system is that there is no tuition fee it's a work basically you're working on a work contract and you will be paid your salary monthly salary now this is the the uh, this actually expired on 30th june 2022 this is basically of university hospitals you can see the first year assistant arts the person who begins the job now this is the brutto salary brutto means before taxes okay uh, so here your taxes will come depending upon your family status about uh, your religious beliefs about how much money you are paying to the insurance so everything will be deducted from that and approximately one can say for a single person who is around 28 29 years old uh, unmarried uh, will receive around 2800 to 3000 euro from uh, this in the initial salary now i would like to remind here to the viewers that this is the basic salary apart from this there will add the extra duties the night duties the, the overtime that you do so that easily adds up around 20 30% on this amount that is written over here so here you can see the sl- small progression that we have here from first year second year up till sixth year so it does not increase very much it does not jump uh as we see in in as we know in us for example attending salary is much higher than a resident salary is multiple times higher here you see that fakats that is a person who has already passed the fakats exam the specialist exam his salary and a sixth year resident salary is not very different so that is one uh, one way i could say not the demerit but this is how the system is here that um, uh, you do, the salaries don't jump up very high the additional way how one can earn is honorar arts honorar arts are the locum doctors basically as we know from the british system that locum doctors calf out in the kasan so that is basically house arts practice uh, you work as a as a, we were talking about the uh, note arts lecture deans that is the not the note arts but the the, the note deans a uh, house arts who will work on weekdays or weekends on the evenings so that way those are uh, very lucrative uh, works the one can take uh, that work and earn extra money if one wants note arts that is also a quite lucrative that's the emergency doctor which we have talked before in the previous uh, talk so this is the the uh, payment scale that one should expect uh, when one thinks about and one wants to know uh, what is going to be after the after getting continuous proof form now when we come talk about private practice now this is the data i mean this is very approximate value was published in one of the websites i have taken it from there i have taken the liberty to copy it from there uh this is from the the, the source i have not mentioned here but there is a source of this uh, you see here these are the numbers i mean these are the rough average uh, numbers one cannot uh, hold fixed that okay this is the amount one which one earns is varies hugely between people and between areas but these are the rough uh, estimate which one has which the the statistics has uh, put that radiology earns something around this much orthopedic something around this much this is just for a rough idea okay one should not uh, like take these take these numbers into very high um, consideration all right thank you very much uh, 
Yeah, Thank you very much, that. Deepak. And when you were showing the number, I just want to mention that when you see the dot, dot means not the dot of our English system, dot like a comma here. Yes, yes. It, I mean, here it is like uh, 850,000. So it's not 850 euros, it's 850,000 euros. So 8,50,000 euros, basically, just yeah. for clarity.